Hey guys, thanks so much for joining me today. I'm here with a special guest, Lloyd Ross, all the way from Australia. He's a former lawyer. Lloyd has three university degrees in biomedical science, business, and law. He's got the trifecta going on there. <laughs> he built a million dollar share portfolio from scratch and is the author of the book, Money Grows on Trees. He was the INBA Natural Bodybuilding Comp winner in 2016 and just completed his first 100 kilometer ultra marathon. He and his wife, Alicia, are also the founders of The Side Hustle Secret, having built a large online network marketing business from scratch, which does 5 million in sales annually, and having helped over 65 people create five and six figure online side hustles following their system as well. They're now on a mission to help 1,000 people diversify their income and level up their money game in 2021. So Lloyd, thanks so much for joining me. I know it's early in the morning there for you, so it's even extra special that you're here with me right now. G'day, and, Amanda. Great to have, I'm great to be on. Thank you so, so much. So excited to get to talk to you about all these different things going on. I mean, biomedical, business, and law. And here you are talking with an internet marketing guru <laughs> about making money online. How does that crazy. happen? It's crazy. It's crazy. I mean, my goodness, what a waste of my life at university. No. <laughs> <laughs> You don't. I don't have any regrets because it got me to where I am today. But yeah, you just don't know where you're going to end up in life, right? It's started off there i was gonna be yeah. a doctor you know silly. same here really um maybe you can relate to this um sure. and i have this conversation quite a bit with people mel robbins calls it the latter life i call it the linear life where we go to school and we graduate high school right and we go to university and then we uh get the job and then we get the house and the marriage and the kids and then we get to this point and it's all been following this path right this very linear path and yeah. maybe that's how you were going about your uh university experience right it's just the thing to do right yep. you get out of one grade and you move on to the next one yep it just seemed like this well everyone at school was going to university and you had to choose your electives and you had to choose a career path at 17 i'm like oh okay I think doctors do pretty good and I love yeah. science Let's do that. And then I'm like, Oh, like it's just not what you think it's going to be like And university is just like, I don't know. I don't know. It, you learn stuff, but it's for becoming an employee somewhere for some institution. Basically. That's absolutely true. I think for me, I went to university for many years. <laughs> I had a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, it's um, deep, right? I got a couple of degrees and, yeah. um, I changed my mind a lot of times. How crazy is it that we think a 17 or 18 year old person is ready to, to decide what they want to do? Like I'm still kind of changing stuff up and I'm 46 yeah. years old. Like, yeah. I know. I still don't know what it'll be when I grow up, you know, no. but I, it, I changed a lot too. I finished what I started, mm -hmm. which was always important to me finishing what you start. But then I'm like, yeah, I did three degrees. I still didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't really know until I was 30. You know, so that's really when it started to click for me. So anyone who's listening who doesn't really know what they want to be when they grow up, it's okay. You don't have to figure it out. Which is cool. I, I totally agree with that. What did you, did you have a job after your college experiences or did you go straight from like eh, getting out of getting the degrees to your own thing? Well, I had a job and that's what really created this uh, desire to get out of it. And I'm really yeah. grateful for the job because it did create this fire in my belly that I do not want this life. Um, what happened was I finished my law degree. I became a lawyer by profession, got out of there fast because it didn't agree with my personality and got a job overseas in Dubai in the Middle East doing projects uh, for a large developer. So I was doing real estate finance and development and was there for a fair few years where I actually got together with my wife who was born there and which is great, obviously. And yeah, um, yeah. I remember commuting, I was commuting to the site office, which is an hour and 10 minutes a day there and back. So it was like two and a half hours in the car every day for years and years and years. And I was just like, oh my God, is this as good as it gets? Yeah. Is this it? You know? And I read like a lot of books when I was younger about entrepreneurship. I read the four hour work week by Tim Ferriss and I was reading mm -hmm. these books, always trying to find something else while I was working. So I was trying to find a side gig to make extra money, to get ahead, to invest more, to get out of my job. That was my strategy. I didn't yeah. want to go there forever. Right. So I remember going to work and I was always, listen, always listened to, didn't have podcasts back then, but it was like uh, audible. So yeah. Listen to the audio books, right? Like on the way to and from work, I was like, this is, I need to get out. 
eventually I just handed my resignation in and went into sales. I was like, I gotta get out. Did you have a plan when you resigned or did you just say, man, I just can't do this anymore? Uh, it was a bit of both. I got to the point where I'm like, oh, I just can't, I'm, I'm, I'm done. Look, whatever will be, will be. I cannot do this because it was so limiting. I remember I'd write reports at work and they would be like, oh yeah, we don't need that anymore and just throw it in the bin. I'm like, surely <laughs> I wasn't put on the earth to write DCP reports that are put in the bin after hours. And it's just like this, yeah. are you serious? I hate bureaucracy. I can't stand inefficiencies. But <laughs> I'm entrepreneur. I'm like, <laughs> anyway, so I'm like, this doesn't suit me. Wrote my resignation letter. And thankfully at that point, I had saved money. And that's where I feel like it gives you so much flexibility and firepower when you have cash in the bank because mm -hmm. you can make decisions like that. All my friends there, they got stuck. They bought yeah. cars and houses, had kids and like, I can't leave work. I'm like, oh my God, you're bound here. And it was this epiphany for me to, I'm like, I'm so glad that I listened to my mom and I saved my pennies and let the pounds build up. That's so and good. Yeah. So I got out and went into work with my dad. He, he happened to have a business, wasn't going too flash after the GFC. And he said, look, you want to, you want to do this together? I'm like, I'd love to learn from you because he's an ultra sales guy. And I'm like, let's go, let's do it. Flew back to Australia, got in there for seven years and just went into commission only selling houses. Mm -hmm. And that was a really brutal, <laughs> it was like a baptism of fire. Yeah. Go into that from no experience. And I learned so much there for traditional business running and selling. It was amazing. But it, you know, that was my plan. And Realized I didn't want to do that either. Like, how do you <laughs> how do you live and grow a family when you're waiting two months for a commission check to roll? Yeah, does that make sense? Like, what do they I say? Like, you eat with you what you kill, right? And what, right, if, totally. what if you're just not a killer? <laughs> uh -huh. Well, it's like you're always looking for the next sale. And yeah. I saw my dad. He was like 60, he's still doing. It. I'm like, I don't want to be that. And so, well, and do you think that you get to the point in that lifestyle? Don't you think it's never going to be enough? Yeah, if you're always chasing that next deal. Yep. It's yeah. just, yeah, the, the pressure's never off, I guess. And it's like, how can I live like this forever? Yeah. Uh, and so I was like, you know what? I need a side hustle. And that's where I just fell into it. You know, there's weird stories you hear, the cliche stories. Of, it fell into my lap. It found me. It kind of did like that. It's weird. My sister introduced me to network marketing and she was a nurse, shift working nurse. And uh, she said, hey, I'm going to do this thing. I'm like, oh, here we go. One of those things. And we just loved the product, got involved, helped some people, got paid more than what we thought. And I thought I can do this part-time from my phone yeah. while I'm in my job. And that suits me fine. And that's how it started. That's how our internet marketing journey began. That's amazing. I love that. And it's not that you weren't really searching for it. You weren't forcing anything to happen. You were just open to the idea that there's got to be something different. Yep. Definitely. And I think, I think that's a big difference. That's kind of mine too. I, I didn't know really which direction I was going. I just knew it wasn't going to be the one I was going in. <laughs> and yeah. it was basically allowing the doors to open as they would instead of forcing them open or be beating them down and making it happen. And yeah. I think that's how some of the best things have happened in my life is just being open to receive whatever comes up. And totally. That's, it's a really hard thing to do, especially, I think you and I are really similar personality types, probably very type A, very much, you know, structured. And especially if we were on that linear path and we were doing the things that we thought we were supposed to do, then by golly, we're going to make this thing happen too. Yep. And it's really a challenge to reset yourself a little bit and sit back and be patient for yes. allowing whatever it is to it to be. It's so hard. It's so hard because, well, I didn't force that hand of the network marketing. The, the, the last thing I thought, because I've been educated at one of the best universities in Australia, right? Arguably the best law school. And I could walk into an investment banking job in two seconds. So I have access to that. It's not yeah. like I don't. It's just that that is not going to give me happiness. Mm -mm. So um, I didn't force that. It fell in my lap a little bit. I'm like, oh, but then I saw the opportunity and I dug into it. Yeah, Rather than looking yeah. for other opportunities, I'm like, this is it. And I think too many people bounce around when they found the thing. I'm like, that's the thing. Let's build it. Let's dig the garden, do a plant the tree, let it grow. And same thing happened with my book. Like, I really wanted to write one. Could have a long time ago. But I guess it was like, I'm open. What will happen? And how it happened was quite amazing, actually. But I so tell me about it. the book. It's, uh, what is it called? Money? 
Money grows on trees. Money grows on trees, which Money is grows. opposite of what we've been told as kids, right? Money That's doesn't right. grow on trees. That's like right. you don't need yeah. that, whatever, which is old mindset programming, right? Yep. That's a, yep. And so it still happens. It do, definitely still happens. Um, yep. And as a person that was told that as a child and even as a young adult, um, and now I'm pretty coherent to it. And I know that I don't program that into my own children. Uh, but I can, I see other people still with that same mentality um, yep. and just resetting the pattern to continue yep. on generationally. And yep. so your book, it's dispelling that. <laughs> yes. It just wants, I wanted to flip their mind as soon as I read the title, like, what do you mean it grows on trees? Are you crazy? I want, I want to read this, you know? So the thing is that I learned how to make money grow on trees. I did. And I'll explain that in one second, but what happened with our, with, with the story is that we built this network marketing business. We, we really went to work at it six and a half years in now and we went well and it allowed us to leave our jobs, my wife and I. And it was like there was a money because we get paid weekly with this business and it's incredible because it's a subscription driven income mm -hmm. and it gave us freedom. So I'm like, that's really cool. That's, it does exist, you know, but what happened with in, when you're in the space of network marketing or digital marketing or, or an entrepreneurship journey, you do meet a lot of people. And what I learned was that people didn't know about money. Like I did. They hadn't read the Robert Kiyosaki books. They hadn't read the richest men in Babylon. These, these elementary books, they just were like, what the heck is going on? And I was like, you, have, you don't even come in, you can't, you can't come in and save a thousand dollars. I recognized there was a problem and people yeah. were coming to me like advice and i'm thinking oh my god okay there's an opportunity here to really help people so that's what happened and i knew i started posting stuff about that and that was like the testing of okay this is what the world needs especially in australia right now for young people i, I can do this and didn't write it straight away but what happened was a friend of mine who's a professional ex-professional boxer he was number 12 in the world australian title holder he, I met him through network marketing. He said, I want you to do my boxing program, which is 10 weeks of training and in a fight. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, sign me up. Cause I just read David Goggins book. Can't hurt me. And it was like, I'll do anything. Let's go. Yeah. You know, like, and so did it and went into this fight, won the fight, got fighter of the series, incredible experience, breakthrough, hectically scary, all that stuff. Anyway, kept training with him. Cause I love the, I love the, the uncomfortableness of that. And one day at training, I started to talk to the guys about money. And he said to me, my coach, my friend said to me, you need to write a book. And he said, you'll do it in four weeks. Okay. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And he called me accountable, right? So I often say to people, I had to get my head punched in to write a book. It's just, that's the way it worked out. It's weird. And then he's the same guy that said, let's do a hundred kilometer ultra marathon. Okay. And you that's did that. That's how that came about. Yeah. So last year I did all these three things in one year. It was just like big year. That's a huge year. You want to fight? Yeah. Want to fight? Wrote a book. Like a boxing match or like boxing cage match. fighting, like no, all, no holds barred? No. <laughs> I don't think I'd do that. But okay. Yeah. It was I thought fun. about it. Yeah. I don't know. There's not a lot of women in, I don't even know if they go up to my age group <laughs> to do I, that. It's brutal. You could find it in the States. It's brutal though. I'm right? sure like, you could. I wasn't um, real. I was, yeah, so, so you did the, you did the boxing and one, you wrote yeah. the book. Did you write that on your own? Did you have help? Did you solicit help? Wrote, from it, wrote, myself, wrote it myself. Wrote it myself. I, I thought about ghost writing and stuff like that. I'm like, Oh, I just need to sit down and write this thing. Cause I can write, you know, and I just needed to do it. It's just like a school assignment that's hanging over your head. You're like, Oh, just God, gotta I do it. Yeah. It's like the, yeah. the paper and all of a sudden you've had four weeks to do it and you get it done yeah. in four hours. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. And this is like four weeks. I thought it's going to take me, you know, it's four weeks and I just smashed it out. And you know, it's not a long book because I didn't want people just to buy another book. Yeah. Read it. I just don't want that anymore. I hate, hate that. I wanted them to read it and get all the nuggets and go and implement it. And I want them to save and make and earn and invest money. I just want them to have the results. So yeah, cover the three briefly, the three main pillars of your book. Um, because you mentioned them earlier in our little pre-conference, um, yep. And I think it's really powerful, the three ways that you've broken this down for people to yeah. understand money. So the book is designed for anyone at any level of money, but more targeted towards people just beginning their money journey. 
the ones who have been told by their parents that money doesn't grow on trees, right? I want to change their mindset. So in the book, the first thing it starts off with to set the scene is it goes through the money archetypes because if you aren't self-aware of which one you are and how you operate with money, where you're a spender, avoider, hoarder, money monk, you need to learn that because that's your behavior around money. Mm -hmm. It talks about that. Once you do that, there's three aspects of it. Like you just said that it covers. The first one is, well, it's save money, create money and grow money. I think that's in fantastic. that sequence, in that sequence, because people have no savings. They, they have no discipline to get that first thousand dollars. If you can't do that, you are not going to be wealthy period. Right. And Take that is really true for regardless of how much money people are making. Isn't yep. that right? Totally. It, just, it doesn't even matter how much you're bringing in. Nope. Everybody has the capacity to save. Yep. It's, but it's not many people know how it's that. Yeah. This discipline, like, Discipline is like this secret formula for success. And if you don't have it, even including with money, you won't find it, right? So it was like, okay, teach people how to just do the first thousand dollars. Because I know that if they have that, they've got opportunity, right? Yeah. Of some sort. But the same habits for a thousand are the same habits to get you to a hundred thousand and a million, right? So that's the first part. Look after the pennies and the pounds will follow. I talk about stories of my mom and how I learned how to do that and all that sort of I give them tips and I just you know, give them tasks in there. And I've had people say $8,000, by the way, when they read the book. It's amazing. I think it's fantastic. And I think it's awesome to say, start with that first thousand. Many of the teachings, especially over here in the States, it's, it seems so much more daunting where they start out saying, well, you need to have six months of it, living expenses saved up. Well, if yeah. you don't have anything saved up, the, the, even the thought of having six months worth is yep. you're already defeated before you begin. And so I think that's a big reason why people don't even try. Like what good is my $500 and savings going to do yeah. then if it's not close to the 5,000 or 15,000 yeah. that they say I need. It's too far away. That goal. Yeah. It's like trying to say, go and run the hundred kilometers now. Yeah. No, you can't. Right. You have to build up to the hundred kilometer ultra marathon. Same with saving. <clears throat> Identical, right. So first part of that, the second part, when they have that, what people are feel now more so than you probably agree with me here is, a lot of people are still in traditional workforce, right? Mm -hmm. Nine to five jobs. And I, they know that the wage growth has been 0%. No one has had a pay rise for like a decade, right? Inflation's done. Like they know now, oh my God, I can't get ahead because I don't even get bonus checks. So I'm saying to people now, like what we did personally is we got a side hustle. There yeah. are opportunities to, and this is where the create money comes from. Be an alchemist. Learn ways to create more money yourself instead of waiting for your employer to give it to you or the government right mm -hmm. so it's about creating money so it's all about this okay here's how you set up a side hustle here's the other opportunities for a side hustle here's which ones i would do if i were you try and find a recurring income one and go to work at it nice way to create money right and then the third part is when you've created that extra 500 bucks a week or extra thousand dollars a week or a month or whatever it might be here's what i'd love to see you do with it so you can create actual freedom. And that talks about investing that extra bit into passive income assets like nice quality shares or property so that it produces cash flow at will passively to you. I think and that's that creates, fantastic. That's create, that creates freedom. Passive yeah. income creates freedom, right? So that's a pathway for freedom that we followed ourselves personally. It's what we do personally. And I just want to impart that in a book because I feel like the world needs it. Okay. One thing really, I think that your book conveys that you may or may not have had the, the idea to convey was multiple streams of income, yeah. right? You're not yeah. telling people to quit their jobs and go nope. figure out another way to make money. You're saying stick with what you've got. You're doing great, but here are some other ways to add to that. Yeah. And I think people tend to believe that multiple revenue streams uh, are really just for the very wealthy, right? And that's not the case. It can be for really anybody at any, you could be working at McDonald's and have yep. a side hustle, right? You yep. could be doing totally. anything. Totally. I mean, with the world of micro investing now, with like apps like eToro and stuff, it, people can invest in shares that produce dividends. You can buy pretty cheap property in the States. I yeah. mean, you know, like it, it's achievable. It's just that no one has this path. They, and, then, and I guess it's just giving them permission, not that they need it, but saying, hey, listen, it's accessible to anyone. 
here is a way where I personally created three income streams without being a millionaire. And, here's and it's a do. mindset thing too, right? And just like the title of your book says, if you're not already ingrained with the fact that money can be made and created, um, then it's going to be, it's, it's a shift that needs to take place to put you yeah. in the position to be okay with yeah. having the money and creating yeah. the money and being, yeah. um, having the idea of the possibility of having wealth really. Yes. Yeah. Because I think a lot of people, when they grow up in this environment at home, where it, like wealth is bad, Scrooge is bad, and all these Disney yeah. characters and so forth that are bad because they seem to have a lot of money. We're programmed at a young age to think it's not good. But the reality is when you have a lot of money and you're a good person, like let's say Warren Buffett gave away $40 billion. 40, yeah. Like yeah. that's amazing. Like what if, what if we could do that? Like, you know, I don't know. I, I, There's I a lot of people, even in my world of this internet marketing space, um, they're, there's kind of slogans are make more, give more, or make yeah. more, do more. It's not yep. about making more for the sake of making money. It's really about making more so you can serve more people at a yeah. higher level. So yeah, there's, yeah, there's nothing, uh, there's nothing honorable or serviceable in a bread line. Yeah. <laughs> you can't help anyone if you're lying up at the government's doll office to take a check. You can't like, yeah. you have to help yourself first, then you can help others. But if you're in that position, you're there for a lesson and yeah. a reason, and you get to then get out of that and then help yeah. others totally. also. So yeah. even just like uh, your university experience, my university experience, your experience having the job, mine having the job, um, yeah. maybe we've been down on our luck in other times before, but every single experience we've had up to this point has allowed us to be able to help others even more. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just really saying that for people that might be listening that feel like they're in a hole or they yeah. feel like there's no hope or like, Oh yeah, well you guys can do it because you already have that or your parents were nicer or whatever story they yeah. have around why we can and they can't yeah. everything that you're going through, everything you've gone through is just giving you more fuel to help yeah. more people down the yeah. road. So totally. Yeah. I just on that point about yeah our backgrounds and so forth i was lucky and i'll just say lucky yeah my dad dropped out of school in grade 10 multi-millionaire at 28 had no father like just you could have you know you could have put every excuse in front of him easy just yeah. didn't listen just went on to, and so i guess i guess i got to see that and that's where i'm like well if he can do that i mean what can i do so yeah that's pretty fantastic. So, My parents were both educators. And so obviously I followed that path for a yeah. while. Um, but then I realized it wasn't for me. And yeah. I also realized too, that I was always looking for the next, like, not necessarily a side hustle. That wasn't even a term back then, <laughs> but maybe I always was just kind of looking for that thing. Entrepreneur really wasn't a term used in my world, uh, until, you know, not very long ago. So yeah. Back when I was in high school, university, even in my first years working as a teacher, I was always doing something else on the side. And it yeah. wasn't, it was also to make money, but it was like something was missing, right? Yeah. Some kind of, I just knew there was more. It wasn't even about the money. Well, I got bored with leisure stuff. Like, yeah, there's only so much like. It was very monotonous. Yeah, I was like, okay, we go out for an eat and then we go traveling. And then like, I was like, really? Come on. Like, what is inside me that can come out and yeah. provide value? Yeah, I guess um, if you feel, if you love giving and teaching and helping other people, then there's always going to be that thing inside you that says, I can do more. But see, that's what we get to do now, right? And you're doing oh. it too. Yeah. So I was lucky enough to recognize my gift in that space of being able to teach and share and coach and bring it in with some of my other experiences, meld yeah. them together and then create something that I love that helps so many people. And you've yeah. really done the same thing. You've taken all of your training, all of your background, all of the experiences you've had, not only yeah. have you written a book, but then you've created some online courses and trainings um, around even furthering people's growth. So tell yeah. me a little bit about how you were, you basically built those online courses. Where did that idea come from to say, oh, you know what? I've done the book. Now I'm going to create these courses online and let people learn from their yeah. own homes. How did yeah. that happen? 
That's a really cool story too. Uh, because I had at that point, like I had read all of Russell Brunson's books, <clears throat> Expert Secrets books and Dotcom Secrets and so forth. And I was already in a space of marketing through our network marketing business. I was, I was around that industry, but I was always looking to, to learn more all the time. So I was reading books. I was doing, I did, I did the OFA challenge, uh, the One Funnel Away challenge with mm -hmm. them. And I did other stuff. Like I was immersed in that because I wanted to learn. It just intrigued me. So anyway, again, I wasn't trying to force it. I was like, mm, no, it's not coming together. Like, so what happened was that the same friend who got me to do his boxing program, this is where reciprocity always works, I feel. He said to me, hey, listen, I'd love to get you down to the studio to do a testimonial. I was like, man, I would love to do that. I'm there. Like, let's go. And people were like, why would you give up your time to go and do it? I'm like, because I love him and I love yeah. what he did for me and I want to give it to him. I'm like, yeah, of course go down to the studio and we're recording and I get up there because I'd done so much, so many, I did Toastmasters speaking for a long time. I've spoken on stages in front of thousands of people. I train a lot of people. I do a lot of, I speak a lot. So I got mm -hmm. on this little platform. His son's there. He's doing all his marketing and stuff. Great job. He was doing a great job. And I'm sitting there and he goes, okay, just give me a quick two minute testimonial like on the spot. And I went bang. He went, Oh, Okay. And then he said to me, son, who does all his marketing stuff said, Lloyd, if I could show you a way where I could build this thing for you and get, you know, on ads and get this return from that, would that be about, he gave me an offer on the spot. Yeah. And I just went, yes, let's meet next Tuesday. Cause that was, I was waiting for the, the this, this connection. Yeah. Cause in yeah. Russell's OFA stuff, he talks about, he outsources a lot of his digital marketing stuff. I didn't have the time or the inclination or the skills to put a great funnel with the great ads. And it was perfect. I was like, this is what I need. Yeah. And so his name's Jay and Jay brought it to life with me. Like we brought it to life together. So that's, that's, how, that's how the courses came about and he's really good. And we just, we did it. We filmed one, one course in a whole day and then another course in a whole day, just smashed it out. And the short course talks about it. It takes it from the book to, Hey, look, you've learned stuff in the book. Now I want to help you literally implement it so you can plant your money tree and grow it. Yeah. And we're going to do it through some easy to use apps. So I take him through that. Oh, journey. nice. Yeah, it's an expansion of the book, the apps, how to use them, masterclass on it. And then it gets some actual results. Like I've had people say, Lloyd, my money tree is a thousand dollars now. I'm like, awesome, it's happening. So I love that. And then the bigger course is all about it's called investing mastery. And it's the final step. It's like, you know how to use some apps for micro investing now. You've got some results, you've got belief. You have faith and trust in this. And some cushion in savings. So <laughs> that's right. And some cushions in savings. So it's like, let's level up. Let's take your money story to the next level. And now I'm going to teach you all the things I've done to just begin buying your own blue chip shares that produce income at your own will. Like, so teaching them how to fish instead of giving them a fish. Yeah. Do you and foresee having live events? Uh, you know, as um, soon as things open up, I could see this having a bit, a really cool live event, uh, okay. yeah. live event so, experience with it. So here's what we did. I mean, we, we, <laughs> my wife goes, when the book came out, she goes, you need to do a book launch. I'm like, that's such a wicked idea. It sounds so much fun. So I told my friend Gavin, the boxing guy who'd actually just written his book, write a passage. He just written his, I'm like, let's do a book launch together came together, did this epic book launch, like 120 odd people showed up on this rainy day. And it was just bigger, this event that we just ran. Oh. It was so fun. Yeah. And so the answer is yes. I would love to do a, an event to then bring them into the, into the sort of inner circle course. But yeah. I'd love to do like a breakthrough two day of them. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. breaking through their money barriers. Yeah. We'll chat uh, offline about yeah. some things and I have some people I want to in, uh, introduce you to. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Yeah. I'm excited. This has been such a great podcast. Um, uh, so yeah. what's next? I know that we've chatted for a little bit. Your book sounds amazing and there's going to be a link in the notes for everybody to be able to get a copy of that and to learn more about you and where to find you. But so if say 2020, if you had to break 2020 down into a word for yourself, I have one in mind, even though we just met, but I think I know what word it might be. What would your word be for yourself for 2020? Epic. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Why? My word for you would have been discipline. Yeah. You were very disciplined to 
show up and learn the boxing. You were very disciplined to follow through with, you know, doing what you said you would do, which is a huge deal for me. Um, I'm a huge integrity person. My coach, Seth Humphrey, that's yeah. his motto is basically do what you say you'll do. Yeah. Um, and that is all about discipline. True. And doing the discipline to do the 100 km yeah. marathon, um, like that's a lot of discipline. That's a tremendous amount of discipline. And I feel like that is the <clears throat> number one, like getting up in the morning to go boxing train and spa people and run stairs in the dark during winter took yeah. discipline, right? Yeah. And I was listening to David Goggins on the radio on the way there because I needed him to be like, dude, you just come on. You can up. do it. Yeah, and then with a book, to sit down and write one takes discipline. Absolutely. And then, and then to do the 100-kilometer ultra was just like 4.30 a.m. starts on a Sunday. Do it. I couldn't even do it. And then to finish it at 26 and a half hours on the day took steadiness and discipline. So you're right. It was just a disciplinary year. So what then would you say would be a great term for 2021? Ah. <sighs> I know I'm putting you on the spot. This I, wasn't planned. <laughs> no, it's totally fine. I, I, it seems to me that 2020 was such a big and amazing year for me. It was the best in my life, right? Which is weird because COVID you know, kind of wrecked the world. It was the best ever. And I'm thinking to myself, how do I top that, right? Because I'm a progressor. How do I yeah. beat that? Yeah. And so I'm like, I guess it's like surrender. Like, there was so much nice. discipline. In 2020, I'm like, I'm just like surrendering to like, I'm not going to force it to be bigger. I'm open to it to be bigger and better. I don't know what's going to come. So I'm like surrendering to it. Like I'm ready, level me up. How it's going to come, I don't know. So, I think I love that. The, there's a book that I've been listening to this last week and a half that I've been kind of down uh, with some time. And it's the law of attraction from Jerry and Esther Hicks. And one of their third law in that law of attraction book is the basically the law of allowing. And yeah. so what you're saying about surrendering, I'm hearing allowing. Yes. Um, and I think that's really, um, it resonates with me personally, just for what I've been reading and going through. And then for what you're saying, I think that sounds fantastic. And it's only, it's only going to go up from here. I mean, look at how much awesome you created in what some people would have just buried their heads in the sand and just and a lot of people did in fact just yeah. kind of yeah. put it on put everything on hold and yeah. wait you continue to move forward and that in itself should be an, an inspiration not only for what you created through that time but the fact that you didn't stand still you didn't stagnate you didn't feel sorry for yourself or for the situation you just kept going and doing something different and new boxing wasn't anything that was you you do weren't doing that to grow money like to make money to do anything no. it was just something different and somebody invited yeah. you in to do it so yeah. that's where allowing also happens to come in when you're allowing things that present themselves to present themselves and you actually take advantage of it who knows what can happen who knew it's, that boxing is going to open up all these doors it's so weird isn't it like when i read david goggins book in december 2019 my wife read it too and we went to f45 you have f45 Jim? we have it here in the states i have not yet experienced it but i've heard it's pretty great so what happens is you you do a set training for 45 minutes right anyway we're in there one morning and I'd read David Goggins book. Can't hurt me. And I'm like, okay, I'm playing too small. I can be tougher. I can be better. What can we do? That's going to make us uncomfortable. Cause that's where the growth comes from. So I was allowing another opportunity. So I'm in there one morning, I look up at the screen and I notice they do 10 F45 sessions per day. So I said to my wife and her friend now, I'm like, let's do 10 in a row. Never been done before. Never, never in the, all of the world ever been done before. So I said to my, the owner of the gym, like, we're going to do 10 sessions. He's like, let me put something together. We'll do it with you. We'll get a group and we'll raise some money. I was like, done. So at the time, you know, did you hear about the Australian fires? Uh, mm -hmm. It was blood, the whole country burning. Anyway, like, let's raise money for firefighters. So we did that. We did 10, we did seven and a half hours of functional fitness in a day, raised 20,000 for the local firefighters. And that was the first 
moment of, okay, we did this, let's find something else. And when the boxing came, I'm like, I'm in. And when the hundred came, I'm in. And, and, and it unlocked yeah. relationships and introductions. And that's what gave us the ideas of moving up and leveling up our money game and our business game. And it, yeah, you're right. You're like, what the heck? But you know, I often say to people like, what, what, how did you write a book? I'm like, I had to go get my head punched in, had to go and you know, run a hundred. <laughs> Weird, right? But that's what you have to do. So at yeah. the end of pain or the other side of uncomfortableness or pain, there is magic. There is. It's not going to be how you it's think. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's, well, it's getting back. uncomfortable. Mm. It's really just about getting uncomfortable. You know, the, the drawing, you've probably seen it, like a circle is your comfort zone. And then there's another little circle. And it's like where all the stuff, good stuff happens is outside That's of right. that. <laughs> like That's right. Anything yeah. you can do on a regular basis to get outside of that bubble, to get out yeah. of that zone. It doesn't have to be as crazy as boxing or seven and a half hours of functional 45 fitness. <laughs> you know, it could be anything that gets you out, out of your zone, gets you yeah. uncomfortable. Yeah. Who knows what, and it's going to not only open up doors for you, it's going to give you this newfound confidence yeah. and newfound desire to do more. Yeah. Totally. It awesome. gives you absolute mental strength. Like something happened recently and oh now that my boxing coach, he's an amazing man, right? Like he's influenced my life so much in, in 2020. And he's about 10 years older than me, so he's like a mentor as well. Anyway, uh we went for a seven hour horse ride the other day. And I haven't been for a horse ride for like 20 years. He's like, I got a horse, you want to come? I'm like, okay, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Get on this horse. I'm like, oh, let's go for a bit of a he said, oh, I'll just be a little one. And seven and a half hours. <laughs> and I don't know if you've ever been on a horse. Are oh, you walking yet? <laughs> it was no joke. The, truthfully, we're, in, we're, we're on these horses. We're going through the streets. We go to the beach and we start cantering up this beach at night by the moonlight and then go in through the back woods and dark. And the neighbors thought we'd stolen horses and we're going up to his house. It's midnight. And oh I'm on this gosh. horse going, what are you, this is the, before 2020 ended, I'm like, this is like, you are, what the heck are you saying yes to? Anyway, so I go to bed, two days later, I wake up, I'm like, oh my God, from the <laughs> head to the feet, I was sore from yeah. that than the hundred, the boxing, anything. How funny anyway, is that? I don't know where that came from, but like, that was bad too. So like, you know. So now what, are you going to become a horse trainer? Are you going <laughs> to, a barrel <laughs> racer? I think we can do some lessons and level that up a bit. It sounds cool. Seems cool to be able to do that. So yeah, nice. Can you imagine that's the way people got around forever? Cool. <laughs> well, no, it'd be cool for five minutes and then you'd bump. Yeah, it not seven hours worth. No. So anyway, I don't know I'm all about just doing uncomfortable things. I think it creates <clears> mental. <throat> so anyway, the story is that because of that seven hour horse ride, I'm like, even though I was really sore when we we're doing it, I'm like, this is easy compared to. 111 kilometer race uh-huh but now you've got that benchmark yeah. about something that's really hard nothing's as hard and that's what levels you up that's fantastic mm. now what's the best way for people to get a hold of you lloyd uh to find you on do they find you on social media like what's the best way best way to actually get in contact is a text message but i wouldn't suggest doing that i think no. um <laughs> i think uh I think uh, Instagram is really easy. So like my handle okay. is Lloyd James Ross. Okay. And again, I'll put all these links in the notes for everybody to be able to connect with you. And then again, you also have the copy of the book that I'm going to have the link for as well. Um, anything else you'd like to add before we wrap it up here today? Uh, I think the most important thing to add is, no one in like both of us we didn't get to where we are because we just had it all put together and ready to go and so my recommendation for anyone listening to this podcast or any of your audience that listen to any of your stuff it's such valuable stuff but you have to work it out through trial and error mm -hmm. so i would say look read books implement things and be cool with making mistakes whether it's boxing or something else like just be good be really okay with sucking Okay. Be good with that. Be good That's with not. That's really be hard to do. For really hard of, for a lot of people, including myself. Nobody goes I into do. something, and go, I'm going to do this, and it's going to be horrible. <laughs> yeah, be, yeah. But, well, it's I do that. I I go into things 
going, you're going to suck at this, but it's okay because you're new. Give myself permission to suck. That's what I would love for people to do because if you do that, you're going to, if you can be bad enough for good enough to get better, you'll be good. You just, yeah. that start, just go wreck stuff. Mario Andretti, he's this famous race car driver, indie race car driver, right? The Andretti family, very yeah. famous. He has this one saying, which I love, and I always use it when I'm coaching. He used to say, if everything feels like it's in control, you're not going fast enough. Nice. How cool is that's that? really good. So that's what, yeah, my last words. Perfect. <laughs> Proceed. Go faster. And thank you so much for having me on. It's been awesome. Thank you so much for being here. It was wonderful. And I hope you'll be a guest again. I've loved it. love to be. Yeah, I've loved it. It's great. Thank you so much. Great. All right. Everybody get Lloyd's book. Follow him on Instagram. Check out his courses. Save some money. Create some money. Grow some money. And uh, have a great, prosperous 2021. Yeah. Thanks for listening to the Amanda Dake podcast. If you like the show and want to know more, check out amandadake.com slash strategy. And please leave a review on iTunes.